Hello, everyone. Good morning. Happy worship to you. I think this is one of our first Sundays where it hasn't been blizzarding or below zero. We're getting there. We're getting there. A blessed Sabbath Sunday to all of you. And a little bit later on, we'll, we'll be sharing communion today. So if you do have bread, crackers, wine, juice, um, cranberry, grape juice, something like that, you can get those things and um, prepare those for a little bit later. And if you are joining us and you're new, I know we have some people who've been um, trying to join and are looking forward to joining today. So if you're on already, that's wonderful, welcome. But if you'd like to add prayers in the time when we have prayers of the people, you can use your chat feature even now and we will be um, collecting those prayers and including them when we get to the prayers of the people a little bit later on in the service. And I'll remind everyone again. So in the meantime, we get to reflect on an Old Testament reading and Maria will be playing some hymns to help us. Prepare. Good morning. This morning I'm starting with a piece that is actually um, composed based on two hymns. The first hymn is Jesus Walk This Lonesome Valley, which is not in the ELC, but the other hymn should be familiar to you. It, this will probably be familiar as well, but the second hymn is Jesus. I want, I want Jesus to walk with me, which is number 325. So these two hymns are combined in this piece.
the next piece is a hymn, 656, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, 656. If you move ahead a few hymns to 659, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant is the next piece. I'm going to conclude with a piece which is based on three hymns. Um, it's kind of an, an Irish or Celtic set. Rockingham Old is 323 in the hymnal if you want to look at that. Um, Slain is 765 or 793. There's different texts there. And the last hymn um, that it's based on is not in our hymnal. The hymn tune is called Irish.
Thank you, Maria, for playing those um, beautiful preludes today. And to the church today, welcome and a blessed Sabbath to all of you. As the reading from Genesis, the story of Noah um, was up, at least a portion of it, it's a much larger story. Um, I, I, I selected this portion because we're looking um, for signs this Lent, and especially today, and in, in honoring the stopping points, the signs in our life that sometimes we miss. That's why if you look at the image, it's a river hitting a rock and, you know, the river gets diverted and stops. And how important it is for us to look for signs of hope, especially in pandemic and all the other things that can weigh on our hearts and our lives and our minds and um, disrupt our wellness and balance. And that is our theme for Lent. Today in our worship, um, if it, you know, worshiping from home, sometimes we feel like, are we really worshiping? If it's more helpful to um, create a worship setting, you can light some candles. We will be having communion, which everybody is welcome to later. So if you have some bread, a little croissant roll and some juice or wine, you can go and get those. And another thing, when we have our prayers a little bit later today, if you'd like to add a specific prayer to those um, at that time, you can use the chat feature anytime in worship and we'll include those prayers um, in, just, in just a few moments. So we prepare our hearts, our minds, our body, our souls to worship the Lord with all of our heart, mind, strength, and soul. Let's continue with the call to worship. The parts in bold is the parts for the congregation from your homes. Hear, O people of God, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. May we love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Take to heart that the Lord is God. There is no other in heaven and earth. The Lord will establish you as his holy people. This very day, we have become the people of God. Hear, O people of God, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Bind these words in our hearts and souls. Good morning. Our opening hymn for this first Sunday in Lent is O Lord Throughout These Forty Days. We continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin, whose mercy for, endures forever. Amen. The journey is long these 40 days of Lent. We stumble our way through this pandemic and grieve the loss of control. We have sinned against you, O Lord, by not loving you or our neighbors in thought, word, and deed. Teach us to repent. 
create in us a clean heart, set us on a path of righteousness that we may serve you and neighbor with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all of your sins. Almighty God, strengthen you and give you eternal life today. Amen. The gospel for today is from the first chapter of Mark's gospel. And this is where we hear about the baptism of Jesus. And immediately after Jesus is baptized, the Holy Spirit, which Jesus sees and hears as he is baptized, in Greek translates to riddle, literally like expels, shoves, or almost vomits him, if you will, with that sort of force into the wilderness, which was not a real happy, warm, fuzzy place back then or even today. And there Jesus is tested and tempted and um, the angels come and wait on Jesus. And in true to Mark's tradition, he is very short and succinct in his explanation. But we hear about this story, which is always leading us into the season of Lent. I'm going to read from the International Children's Bible, actually, today. Um, so Mark 1, 9 to 15. At that time, Jesus came from the town of Nazareth in, in Nazareth in Galilee to the place where John was. Now, John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. When Jesus was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven open. The Holy Spirit came down from heaven on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven and said, you are my son. I love you. I am very pleased with you. Then that spirit sent Jesus into the desert alone. He was in the desert 40 days and was there with the wild animals. While he was in the desert, he was tempted by Satan. Then angels came and took care of Jesus. Now, after John the Baptist was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee and he preached the good news from God. Jesus said to all people, the right time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent, change your hearts and your lives and believe this good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Savior, and Lord. Amen. It is wonderful to see you all here, church, this beautiful morning in winter, the first Sunday of Lent. We have many days ahead of us. Um, in Lent, we're using a, a devotion booklet, and there's more at the Kingo office entrance if you'd like to pick them up. It's Living Well Through Lent 2021 listening with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And you can have these, they're free. You can also get, um, download these for free on, online. So I can help you with that. If you need, just let me know after worship or so. And, for, and there's a daily reading, right? For each day of Lent. And today the author, her name is Donna Wall. And she reminds us of many things, but one thing in particular, is how unsettling it is to realize how quickly we can go from like a mountaintop high to an ultimate despairing low. And sometimes those lows can feel like they just take over our life. With the fleeting moments of those mountaintop highs, sometimes there's, there's so much unwellness and, um, and, and, and the balance of our life just becomes so off-centered and un, just out of kilter. And this was true for Jesus too, especially as we hear the story of Jesus' baptism, where the people around him don't hear this, but Jesus notices and sees that the heavens are open, the spirit like a dove descends on him, and his heavenly father speaks to him 
It says, you are my son. I love you. And with you, I am very pleased. These beautiful moments between father and son. That is an ultimate molten top high, I would say. And then that same spirit in the next moment shoves him into the wilderness where he's alone with wild animals and not to mention, oh, by the way, he's tempted by Satan for 40 long days and nights, a very despairing low all in one day. Later in our devotion for today, we hear a... Um, there's a theologian, a poet. He has the most amazing speaking voice. He's from Ireland. He teaches in Belfast. His name is Padraig Otuma. You can look him up. Um, he's a great storyteller and interpreter of scripture and how it ties into our stories of our lives. And he shares an interesting quote. He says, to engage with scripture requires careful and heartfelt reading Noticing the nooks and crannies where our imaginations lodge, paying attention to the curiosities that emerge, creating some stopping points along the way. Now, Mark in his gospel doesn't have a lot of nooks and crannies, right? Some of the others, Luke, I mean, the Christmas story goes on and on and on. Mark doesn't even have one, you know? I mean, Mark is very succinct. He moves quickly, but still our imaginations and our curiosity probably get the best of us when we wonder what was really going on in this story of baptism and temptation. To wonder about the difficulty, even today, if you had to go into the wilderness for 40 days and you had a whole, you know, you could prepare physically, you could take all of the best gear. Jesus had none of that. And he was alone. And with Satan and Satan's whispering, the incessant whispering in his ear, just carving away at his identity day after day. And Jesus didn't know in the beginning of those 40 days, did he, how long he was going to even be there? Was he going to be there just a day with Satan? 40 years like the Hebrew people and Moses wandering the wilderness? Your mind can get the best of you when you're in a wilderness, a despairing um, setting. Jesus must have replayed the ancient stories of scripture that he grew up with as a young Jewish boy and young man. The stories of Hagar and Ishmael who went into the desert, into the wilderness with the intention of dying. Or Jacob wrestling with God one night, with God. And Moses and the Hebrew people wandering again, decade after decade, exhausted, afraid, death, angry, all of the above. But I find another curious stopping point, taking Pedro Otuma's quote into play. I think it's so important to stop and wonder and to be curious about when Jesus emerges from the wilderness. He emerges not saying, I want nothing to do with this mission or with my baptism, I want none of this, but he emerges renewed and he is ready and preaches the good news of Jesus Christ that the kingdom of God has come near and that this is good news for all of us, whether we are at a mountaintop high or a despairing low. And it's while in Jesus is in that wilderness that he stops, he has to, and listens to God and leaves emerging with from that experience with purpose and with what even seems to be joy. Now Lent may be our metaphorical 40 days of wrestling in the wilderness, right? I mean, we're sitting in the comfort of our homes, cup of coffee or tea, slippers, pajamas. Maybe you're still in your bed and amen to you. But this Lent pales in comparison to living over a year already in this pandemic. And who of us 
have not already asked God for a sign like Noah? Who of us has not asked for mercy in one way or another, whether it's been this past year or another year? Who of us has not experienced loss or suffering? Who? I've said so many prayers asking for God's holy angels like Jesus to accompany us or certain individuals through their trauma in Lent. And that the spirit, the same spirit that drove Jesus into the wilderness would also direct us out of our wilderness experiences. And soon, boy, we don't like to be in wildernesses. <laughs> and like Jesus and every other moment of mountaintop high experiences to, ex to, to the exceedingly despairing lows, we need to remember the importance of stopping, of breathing and listening to regain again our wellness and balance. And we're not very good at stopping breathing and listening. If Jesus had to be intentional about it, then how much more do we need to be intentional about it, right? I mean, amen. Oftentimes Jesus went to be alone with God where he stopped and he breathed the spirit and he listened to God. We talk, we text, we tweet, sometimes all in the same second. Um, we, we are terrible listeners. I find myself, before someone is done talking to me, I'm ready with an answer. Not a sign of a good listener. And I bet we all need some practice in that. Or it wouldn't hurt, right? Practice makes perfect. I hate that word perfect, but that'll be a different sermon. <laughs> We easily lose our purpose, our days can drag on, and we often can go about our lives very disconnected. And we become sometimes as hollow and shallow as our breathing can be. We forget who we are and whose we are. Now, nearly every person in Mark's gospel forgot who they were or how they were connected to the spirit. But Jesus goes about Mark, this is one of the biggest themes in Mark, restoring people's identity, reminding them in all of us, and hear this today, church, that God loves you and that you are worthy. And that as God told his son when Jesus was baptized, with you I am well pleased. When we are baptized, no matter the day of our life, those same words ring true. And we need to hear that, but we have to stop, breathe, and listen so that we aren't distracted by the many other things that are going on in our lives. To breathe in that spirit and to remember, oh yeah, breathing. It is the breath by which we have life in earth in every living thing through God, our creator, who breathes into us that we may live and be connected with each other and God. A healthy exercise, perhaps, for this Lent is exactly what Padraig Otuma says. It's important for us to honor the stopping points, like the current of a fast-moving river that hits a boulder and stops its course. Stop and listen and look where you are and where you have been and trust that God is even in those most difficult moments. Rather than wishing we were out of these painful experiences, it is God through Christ and death and resurrection that we can even be in the most difficult, despairing moments and know that resurrection promise and life abounds in Christ for each of us. That's our baptismal promise. And it really can re-anchor us and move us about our days and reorient us to each other and God. Honor the stopping points, whether it's a mountaintop high or a despairing low, that we might know the hope and joy of Jesus Christ through death and resurrection. Because even in those wilderness places, God is present. If we would just stop, breathe, and listen. Thanks be to God. Amen.
we sing our hymn of the day, Thy Word is a Lamp. It's out of the uh, Purple Worship and Praise Hymnal 144. Thank you, Jonathan. Our prayers are going to be a little bit different today. One of Kingo's um, partnership congregations, some of you know this and some may not, is with a church not too far away from us in Milwaukee called Hephatha Lutheran Church. And the youth of Hephatha, who are a part of a work ministry program, put together this video, which I think um, ties in, well, I don't think, I know it ties into Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech and to hear what the children's dreams are. So after the video plays, then we'll continue in prayer. And again, you can chat in your prayers if you have specific prayers that you would like me to include in just a few moments. Thanks, Brianna. of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created each other. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that my life matters. I have a dream that my children will be free to live life as they should. 
I have a dream that we spread more love than hate. I have a dream that one day we will be able to walk outside without being judged by the color of our skin. I have a dream that God will heal the world that he created and for the people of the world to be respectful, be educated, and be knowledgeable of all race, creed, and color. I have a dream that babies do not need to think of racism and killing. I have a dream that mothers and fathers can come home to their children. I have a dream that one day this world will come together and be whole and stop all the killing. I have a dream that all the hate and sickness will pass over and spread more love. I have a dream that our world will become at peace where there is unity in all phases of lives, employment, housing, race relations, justice, poverty, and cultural situations are better. I have a dream that black people and white people can be together. I have a dream where our homeless will find homes, our hungry will be fed, our poor will be rich, and where our sinners will be saints. I have a dream that there will be no violence and no hunger. I have a dream that all mankind will get along with each other. I have a dream that God will give us peace in our world. My dream to get rich and um, help all the homeless people get a house and food and make sure they have a right to take care of themselves. I have a dream that I will walk out my front door and there will not be any trash all over my community. I have a dream that one day we all can be equal and there will be no race discrimination, no segregation or anything. I have a dream that we as a nation can be one in peace, that we are no longer divided but whole. I have a dream of our nation being of fairness and equality finally a nation under God's own image. I have a dream that racism will stop. I have a dream that one day very soon that my God will give us peace all over the nation. I have a dream our children will no longer have to lose their lives to violence. I have a dream that my black brothers will not be racially profiled. I have a dream that Police can keep their knees up our necks. I have a dream that one day there'll be no more foster homes, only adoption homes. I have a dream that there'll be no more food pantries that people will no longer go hungry. I have a dream that one day all of my people will be free in order to try to make a life and sustain a successful future for themselves without having to work 10 times harder. I had a dream about being healthy and strong. I have a dream that one day we won't have to protest that Black Lives Matter because we will be treated like it. That Black moms will no longer wonder if their sons or daughters will come home safe because the people who are supposed to protect them was the reason they didn't make it home. That our communities will look different because we were offered different opportunities growing up. I have a dream that change will come. And we give thanks for um, our sisters and brothers of all ages at Hephatha Lutheran and their prayers unite with ours. And Melissa continues with our prayers today. God of newborns, infants, toddlers, children, adolescents, youth, young adults, and adults of every age, thank you for the hopes and prayers of every youth who dream dreams of transformation. Bless the youth of Hepatha and Kingo Lutheran churches. May their dreams energize us to work toward an end to systemic racism and equity for all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of ashes and dust, from the wilderness, Jesus leads us through hardship, sin, evil, and death to resurrection promise. Today is a new day in Christ, restoring us a common will to love you and our neighbor. 
help those who suffer, especially from COVID and other illnesses in mind, body, and spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Lord, from our church community, we pray for a successful heart procedure for Pat. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for Alexis' friend, Jim, who will be undergoing emergency eye surgery tomorrow for a detached retina, retina that the surgeons may be at their best for him. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Prayers for Bob, struggling with the loss of family and friends. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Prayers that the dreams of the Hephatha families and those of so many others will come true and soon. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for Peter as he continues to seek his path forward. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all of our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and God's people together say from our homes, amen. We continue with the morning offering. And there are different ways to give to the ministry and mission at Kingo Lutheran Church. They're on your screen, text to give, give online, or you can mail a check. Thank you for your giving. And because it's Lent, we do have a special offering that is going to Outreach for Hope of the Greater Milwaukee Synod of the ELCA. And um, again, you can give online through our website. You can enter the dollar amount under Kingo Shares or you can text to give at the number. And then you would, like if you wanted to give $25, you would enter 25 and then Kingo shares. Or if it's easiest, you can always mail a check. And again, this is our special Lenten offering that goes to Outreach for Hope, which helps communities like Hephatha and so many others within the ELCA congregations within the greater Milwaukee area, help their ministry and mission programs like the work program that happens through Hephatha and so many other congregations and communities. So thank you for your giving and for your support. Let us pray. Dear great and gracious God, you remind us of the goodness and joy that comes from giving as we share and care for others. A joy wells up within our souls. May the happiness in us be authentic and evident to the world so that all people know and understand that gladness comes first from you and your self-sacrificing giving. In your name we pray, amen. And another video for Outreach for Hope. Sending love to each and every one. Hello, my name is Ladora Meadows. I am a full faithful member at Hepha Lutheran Church here on the corner of 18th and Locust. I love my church. I am a follower of Jesus. I love to give. I am a cheerful giver. I have been giving all my life. I was taught from a young age to always give to always give love, to always show people that you care about them. I also have mercy on people. I thank God for the children that I have in my home. I have been a foster mother for about, almost about 35 years. I have adopted numerous of children. I have had a whole lot of children in my home, almost about 50, almost. And God is just so good to me. And we love to give. And I teach my children how to give. I teach my biological family how to give. Giving is what Jesus did. His whole Bible is with his word are about giving. 
what greater person could we ever follow is Jesus Christ and giving. And I just love it. Malachi 3 and 10 talk about giving with your tithes. He said, bring your full tithes to the storehouse so the storehouse can have food in it. I love it. I, I always love it to, to do it. I, I also love to help out in my community where there is times when I have to pass out food. I go around pass out food to different ones. If I need to just clean the yard or whatever, I am a truly giver of God. I love it. I will follow Jesus always. God bless each and every one. Thank you. And with that, I think the only response that we can say as a church is amen. So amen, church. Thank you again. Um, we're going to turn to um, our Holy Communion service. And if you have your bread and wine or juice, whatever, that's wonderful. We're going to have say the great Thanksgiving together. And then I'll tell you when to hold up your bread. We'll bless it and your wine. And then we'll be sharing that with each other. So, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. So, if you have your bread at this time or cracker, roll, whatever it might be, we will bless it. We remember in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now if you have your wine or juice, we'll hold that up to bless it. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink. Do this for the remembrance of me. We'll pray the Lord's Prayer together, and then we'll commune. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So if you have the bread in your hands, Take and eat at this time. The body of Christ is given for you. Shower the body of Christ is given for you. Amen. You may commune yourself or another person if there's more than one person in your room. The body of Christ is given for you. Amen. And church, the blood of Christ is shed for you. Take and drink. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. And we'll say the or pray the prayer after communion. God of steadfast love, from our tables you gather us into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit, that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new 
in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And our closing hymn, it's one of my favorite hymns, Out in the Wilderness. It's also in the uh, Purple Worship and Praise Hymnal. It's number 115. Remember in your wilderness to stop, breathe, and listen because God will call to you and remind you that you are his beloved. God forms us to be the church today. Through Christ, we are created to do good, freed by grace to serve our neighbors. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. A few little announcements um, this coming Wednesday at seven, and I think for the following five Wednesdays, actually, we will meet via Zoom for a meditation and kind of a prayer service where we will be stopping listening and, um, and breathing. Can't forget that, or we won't make it long. And we'll be intentional about just taking some time in, in this pandemic and in our worries and just our exhaustion, really, to just meditate in prayer and um, be in community with each other. It'll be very relaxed, very simple with some very simple songs. I hope that you'd feel welcome to join us anytime on these upcoming Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Look for the Zoom invite during the bulletin board, the online bulletin board that comes to you through your email. If you'd like to be on that email list, you can subscribe through Kingo's website at kingo.org. So Brianna, who is behind the scenes, she's our minister of communications. You don't really see too much of her on a Sunday morning, but she's responsible for all the PowerPoints and keeping us kind of moving through the service. And she's having a baby really soon. In the middle of March, she's scheduled to have her baby. So we're having a shower for her on March 7th through Zoom. It'll be a blessing. And um, we have some things for her already, but you can make a financial gift if you, because of the baby's due date, we would hope you could do that by March 4th. You can mail a check with the memo, Brianna gift, or you can text again to staff gifts and the amount that you'd like to um, contribute. There also will be a link to a meal train. So, um, so 
the Keen family doesn't have to worry about cooking every day as they welcome their newborn son. We get to pray and celebrate with Lou David today and with David as well. Um, so another thing I'd just like to highlight is that we are going to stick around after if you'd like to take part of the White Fragility book study, Kingo is committed to the work of anti-racism. Anyone can take part. You can sit quietly and just observe, or you can, you know, offer your thoughts. And I'm leading that today, so I look forward to seeing you. Um, I think there was something, um, let's see, Dennis or Walt, does someone want to say something about the book club that meets next Sunday? 7 p.m.? Um, that was me. I... Um... I neglected to get it out in, um, in timely fashion, so I take the blame for it. But next um, Sunday, 7 p.m., we'll be discussing the book Sissy, which is a um, really fun book on a difficult topic, actually. And um, so it's another example of how we can listen to an area that we may not be familiar with. And um, you can get the book from the library. Um, it's by Jacob Tobia, T-O-B-I-A, and um, so uh, if you want more information about that, contact Dennis or uh, me, Alita Chasik, and um, the uh, seven o'clock next week, will the link will be in the, uh, via Zoom, and the link will be in the bulletin board on Wednesday. Thanks. Thank you, Alita. Um, and so if, if I see it's almost 11 o'clock, the service, we had a couple different videos and we have a really fun one coming up. So don't go anywhere right now. Hang in there. Um, we'll start our book club or our book study, excuse me, at about 1110 today. So the doxology, a doxology is a simple, actually an ancient hymn that gives praise to God. Doxa in Greek means praise, glory. Um, and the tune may be really familiar. Through our Holy Currencies learnings, we're using the words that um, Eric Law, Pastor Eric Law of the Holy of the Kaleidoscope Institute rewrote. He's a musician. We're going to sing that. And then don't go anywhere. We have a really fun interpretation of that doxology. That's all I'm going to say. Praise God from whom all blizzards flow. Praise Him at thirty-five below. Praise Him in snowdrifts ten feet deep. Praise Him though winter makes us weep. Okay, we just had to have fun. Praise God from we, It's just so much fun. It's been a very cold and snowy winter, and these guys are great. Um, go in peace, everyone. Smile in your heart. Stop, you know, breathe, listen. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the church says, thanks be to God. Thank you, church. Hang in there if you want to take part in the book study or I'll see you around. Have a blessed day.